What's up, everybody? We'll back at you here with another one, guys. It's been a crazy last couple of weeks. I've never done a video in a while, but man, I've just been out there. I've been out there getting it, hunting it, uh, man. And I've had just some incredible stuff fall in my lap. Uh, I can't wait to show you guys it. I got a nice stack, um, some killer grails. Um, it, it's been, it's been fascinating. Uh, then I've come across some records that I thought I, I would never, I would never have. But here I am to show them to you. So let's get started. This has been great. So we all know recently uh, Lonnie Smith died, uh, incredible organist, uh, just super funky. So I've been trying to add add uh, add some of his uh, discography to the collection. This one, the first ones I found, uh, I've had a copy of this before. This one's really clean. This is original uh, 69 pressing. Yeah, really funky. And Lonnie Smith on Blue Note. Y you can't go wrong. Now this one, I got a copy of this one. This funk reaction, really cool. Such a cool cover too, check them out. But this one, that's a white label promo. I found this in some in some random thrift store um, out in Bartow County in the country. And man, there was a bunch of there was a bunch of good stuff in there. And I pulled this out, man. It's it's squeaky clean. It's squeaky clean. So I might sell the original and, and keep the promo. But yeah, man, funk reaction. This is a good one. That's a jammer. Keeping with Lonnie. Aphrodisia. This is a uh, 1975 press on Groove Merchant. Um, I always find them with the cut corners, and they're usually beat. But this one's a, this one's a good clean copy, um, and I'll and I'll add this one uh, to the permanent collection. Really good, really good. It has a little more little more Latin feel to it. Um, but Lonnie, yeah, he, he, he's really good. Okay, this one, this one, this is an oddball one here. Um, and then when I listened to it, it was, it was, it's different. It's really different. Uh, this came out in 1969. I think this is his only band's release. But that's Seven Deadly, plus uh, the Seven Deadly Sins on uh, ABC Probe. This is, this is interesting. This is kind of Christian rock. Um, <clears throat> it sounds more like, like, like opera rock, kind of in a way. Um, it's different. It, it, it really is different. Um, some people might not like it. I, I listened to the I listened to the whole album last night. Um, yeah, it, it's different. Not rare. I mean, kind of rare. Not valuable, but really cool and, and a really cool cover. Um, and I don't have a lot. Of, I don't have like a lot of Christian rock uh, in my collection. But this one, uh, this one's different. This one's different. And they jam. Um, if you can get get past the, well, if you like Queen. Not, not compared it to Queen, but it's kind of like that. It's got that symphonic opera type. Like it's almost for a, uh, I don't want to say like a musical, but it kind of is, but it rocks. It jams. Check it out. Pretty cool. Okay. Now this guy, I don't have none of him in my collection because, you know, not really a fan, but this is his debut release. This is his first release. And I had bought I had bought a nice stack of records, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. And when I was cleaning, like a week later, because I'm so busy, I just don't have time, I pulled this out. I was like, I was like, oh snap, that's his debut. That's Billy Joel. Cold Spring Harbor. This is a uh, 71, 71 press. Really good. It's got um, a little more folky. Not quite so commercial, and it's got that, uh, she's got a way about her. Yeah, really good. So, probably the only Billy Joel that I'll have. Um, and collectors go after these for a little bit. Real, real Billy Joel, real Billy Joel fans. Great songwriter, great piano player, too. Great mustache, too. <laughs> okay, this one here, you guys know how to do, man. I'll put the best stuff at the end, so you gotta, you gotta watch the whole video. Now this one, I see this copy all the time. When I see a clean one, an original press, of course, you know, you gotta keep it. That's Led Zeppelin's Graffiti. This is 75, 75 press. It's got everything, it's got the inserts. Uh, it's really clean. Some people say that this is their best. We don't have time to debate that. <laughs> we don't have time to debate that. Uh, either way, it's good. I mean, Led Zeppelin, you can't go wrong. Uh, and I'm happy to happy to put a, put a nice clean clean pressing. In the collection this has been this has been this has been crazy you know th just the, the these <laughs> these records that have just kind of just 
kind of dumb luck just fell into my lap. Now this one here, this lady here, I get everything, everything I can find by her. Uh, and that's Nina Simone, gifted in black. This is a 60, no, no, this is a 70. This is a 1970 pressing. This is really good. It's got a song on here. Um, black is the color of, oh, black is the color. Now, apparently that's uh, like a, um, an old Irish song. And I think what they're referencing is uh, a man's, a man's girl that had died. And as she's, as she's dying in decaying, that's where he's talking about this, this, the skin being black. Who knows? But, but I think that is, is an old Irish song. Man, it is beautiful. It is beautiful. There's a couple of live versions of her playing that song. Ooh, check it out. Check it out. It is amazing. She's amazing. She's amazing. Um, you know, we all know the story of her, but God, hell of a singer, hell of a player. Just so much emotion when she plays. Uh, yeah. Check out that live version. Black is the color. So good. So good. All right. This one here, this one here's a classic. This one here's a classic, and I see it all the time. But man, this copy was so clean. Love it. And that's Otis sitting on the dock of the bay. It's his last album before he tragically, uh, tragically died. It's the original uh, '68 press. I mean, I mean, what else can you say about Odin? One of the most recognizable singing voices. That, I mean, ever, ever. Um, and they just put you in a good mood. I mean, Otis, Otis can't do, I mean, he couldn't do no wrong. Shame, shame that he was gone so soon. God, he could have put out, man, the, the, the kind of, the kind of soul he could have put out like in the early seventies, mid seventies, who knows, who knows what he could have done, but it's, it's unfortunate. Um, and, th and this is a great one to have. I'd love to have a complete Otis discography, but man, they're hard to, they're hard to find good clean copies because they sure were played. Um, yeah, Otis, he's the man. Okay, another one. I see this. I see this all the time. But this one was. Dude, this one's smoking damn near near mint. It's like okay, gotta have it. And that's Black Sabbath's Paranoid. It's not a. It's not a Vertigo, but it's an original uh, 71 U.S. press. Man, this thing is. This thing is smoking. This thing is. It looks untouched. Unbelievable. Uh, the gatefold's clean. The spine's nice and clean. You know, U.K. pressings, Vertigo. We know what they go for. Um, you know, I keep my eye out in the wild, but man, the, the hard, hard to find a vertigo just floating around in the wild in a, in a cardboard box where somebody's trying to sell. Usually I have to go online or to a big collector to find that, but great album, iconic album, uh, and I'm glad to have a, a really clean uh, original U.S. press uh, in the collection. This one here, <clears throat> I love this. I love this. And the man behind this, I'd like to get everything he has. There's a few out there that are just damn near impossible to get but that's the zodiac cosmic sounds now if you know about this this is a what 60 this is a 67 press on electra this is more garson if you guys know more garson what he did with the moog it was uh it, it was pretty amazing this is a uh, this is some trippy far <laughs> this is some trippy far out stuff and i love the sound you know i got the plantasia um he's got some other uh one-sided records that are really really difficult to find you know they go for five six hundred dollars uh, but his sound is his sound is killer man and this is this is this is uh, uh apparently this is his first the first one that he was behind that was like a full length i could be wrong uh but anyway dude this is great and just check out that cover that's a man, that's so cool it's kind of like the um that reminds me of that uh Let's see, is it anything like, uh, no, no, but still, cool enough. And more Garson. He's the man. Okay. Now, I know, I know everybody knows this album. I've actually just listened to this the first time. I'm behind on, on a lot of, on a lot of good music. Um, and this thing is, this thing smashes. It, it's dirty, and I'm kind of embarrassed that I'm just now, just now getting around to it. But that's MC5. Uh, and you guys know this is kick out the jams. This is a uh, 69, 69 press. This guy's out of Detroit. You know they got a pretty uh, terrible story. Um, this is a this is a live performance in Detroit, and uh, this is the uncensored version. You know, 
Um, they have the they have the the the, the un, this is the censored version. They have the uncensored version where he says kick out the jams, motherfucker. This one says brothers and sisters. Still good, still dirty. It's really rocking, especially for its time. Um, but they, they, you know, they had some they had some issues. Got super political, and I guess that affected the music. And they didn't really they didn't really put out much else after this. I think they had one or two albums that just didn't didn't do real well. Uh, and they were dropped by the label but this one here i mean this is you know we see this all the time um but it's just, it's so good and i'm late to the show but i finally got me a good clean copy uh yeah and i jam it regularly it's good all right we're getting into some uh we're getting into some real muscle now this one here you see this label you gotta have it especially myself that's doug Carn, infant eyes this is a uh, 71 on black jazz, really good soul jazz, anything, anything on that label, guys, you got to pick it up. Um, I got, uh, I got one other, it's uh, The Awakening. Um, I like to have the whole discography of, of black jazz, but man, there's a lot of stuff out there and it's, it, it's, it gets, uh, gets a little, <laughs> gets a little expensive, but this is a good one. This is a good one. Um, a lot of, uh, he plays a lot of, uh, a lot of hits written by like Wayne Shorter, um, yeah, there's a lot, like Coltrane's got a few Coltrane songs on here that they're playing. Really, really good. Again, Black Jazz. Get everything you see. Now this one, I didn't even know about this one. And I tried to get everything by this artist. Um, that's John Coltrane, Stellar Regions. This is a 1995 limited edition. This has got some unreleased tracks with him and his, and his wife Alice and Pharaoh Sanders. And it's it is it's out there if you know his you know how he started to branch out into the more to the more uh, free jazz you know especially with his with his cosmic sound uh, album that he did in uh, 68 I mean this this falls in line with that man there's some they really experiment they really do they really experiment and you know it's not your typical bop swinging you know blowing jazz it's it's spacey it's it's uh, it's good it's really good. It's really good. And I didn't even know this thing existed. Um, and then when I listened to it, I was like, oh, oh, wow, wow. And these are these can be these can be a little tough to find. These can be a little tough to find. You know, they'll cost you at least at least a hundred bucks for a good clean copy. But yeah, John Coltrane, man, this is really good. This is really good stuff. If you like that kind of if you like that kind of free, it's not free jazz. I mean, there is some there is some um, there is some melodies to it, but. His play and Pharaoh's play, you know how free Pharaoh can get. Pharaoh can get out there. I Man, this, this is a great album. It really is. Okay. All right, guys, we're getting into some. This is some heat right here. Now, this one, this this next one, this isn't a rare album by by any means, but to find a clean copy, really, really hard. And at least it, at least it has been for me. And I've come across this copy. God, dozens, dozens of times, dozens. I mean, I can't, I can't even count how many. But they usually, it's usually beat to death. Finally, found me probably the cleanest copy I've ever seen, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to have it. And that's Elvis's, this original, 56, 56 mono, and it's clean. It is clean. Covers clean. Um, in my opinion, the only Elvis album you should own. You know. You know, he had other great stuff. God, he put out, he put out 8 million songs, I think. And the first one should be, in my opinion, I mean, unless you want to go for the Sun Records, which, you know, you need to mortgage your house to, to really have those. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like I said, this was not rare by, by any means, but clean ones, hard to find, hard to find. And collectors will pay a good bit, but man, I'm happy to have this. Just look at that cover. It's beautiful. Elvis, the king. Okay, this one, this one here is mind blowing. Uh, I had a few more um, of this artist or this group uh, that I sold, and now this is this is the only one. This is the only one I got, and I really got to get. Um, I really got to get up to speed. Let's Funkadelics free your mind, and your ass will follow. This. This is crazy. This is a 1970 original 70 press on West on Westbound. Man, this thing is this thing is more this thing is more psychedelic. 
I mean, this heavy guitar, heavy guitar use. Any of you guys know Funkadelic? I mean, we know Maggot Brain. Um, but yeah, this one, whew, this one's mind blowing, man. This is some great Eddie Hazel on Eddie Hazel on the guitar is just he's just stellar. He's making love to that thing. This is this is this is a really really great album, um, and I, and, I, and I'm happy to have it. Anything by Funkadelic, you guys know. Don't hesitate. Just pick it up. You're gonna love it. And if you don't, there's something wrong with you. Okay, this is the last two. This one here, I'm I'm, I'm really happy to have. I, I, I'm trying to get all this guys. I'm trying to get to all this guy's stuff, but it's getting harder and harder to find. And that's Red Garland. And that's Soul Junction. This is with him, Donald Byrd, and John Coltrane. This is a uh, original uh, 1960. This is original 60 press. This is grown folks music. You know, this is, um, I mean, just these guys together. It's, you know, it, it's, it, it's so great. You know, um, Red Garland, and he's so good on the piano. So good on the piano. You know, and him and John um, together, which I got a few, I got a few other ones. Um, yeah, they, they, just, they just sound so good. They sound so good together. And the Red Garland ones are, are really getting, are, are getting tougher to find, uh, especially original pressings like this. But man, yeah, so happy to add this to my uh, Prestige collection. I'm gonna do a video. I'm gonna do a video of just, of just the Prestige uh, records that I got, because man, I'm really starting to add some, some really tough ones. Uh, but yeah, and this one, and this one's right up there with them. Such a good album, such a good album. It's kind of up there with the the Southside Soul. If you guys know the John Wright, the John Wright trio, it, it kind of sounds like that, but without any without any blowing. You know, uh, it's just straight up bass, uh, piano, and drums. Of course, with Bird, Bird on the horn, and and Coltrane doing his thing. Man, it's magic. Beautiful magic. All right, guys, that's not quite a short video. Okay. This is the last one, guys. This is, this is. I've been on the hunt for this for for some years now. Uh, really, never thought I'd have I'd have an original pressing. I thought it'd be a later pressing. But when I had the opportunity to get this, you know, I, I had to do some trading. And I had to do some um, wheeling and dealing to pick it up. But I got it, and it's mine. And that's Hank Mobley's Mobley's message. This is a uh, original uh, '56. It's 56 pressing. This thing is, this thing swings. You know, you got, you got Donald Byrd, Jackie McClan, Doug Watkins, Art Taylor, Doug on the bass, Taylor on the sticks. Yeah, a little more, a little more um, bebop. It's got some bebop to it. Um, you know, if you like that, if you like that Charlie Parker type sound. Um, but then it's got some, it's got some good slower jams. And Mobley just, Mobley and uh, Bird just, show out I mean, they really show out this is a, this is a, this is a tough what, what originally what originally when I was looking through a long time ago when I was looking through for the prestige uh, uh, you know discography and catalog what what sticks out to me um, are the covers and this is a great cover I love the green I love the picture and then it's like oh that's a pretty cool cover let me listen to it and then when you listen to it it's like man, it's just it's just got it all. It's got great cover art and the music. I mean, the music is what's most important. Um, but yeah, dude, this is this is this is great. I'm so happy to add this to my Prestige collection. Um, I'm really going out there trying to trying to snatch up the Prestige and of course like Blue Note and Strategies and stuff like that. But man, I love Prestige. It sounds so good. And Rudy, of course, you know at the helm, he just he masters a, a great recording. Um, I'd love to go visit that place in Hackensack, New Jersey. Maybe I'll do that. It'll be on my bucket list one day. The Mobus message, so good. So happy to have it. All right, guys, that's it. Um, I got some more stuff in the works. I'm probably going to do another video really soon. I'm, I, I want to do one where it's nothing but the soundtracks. You see The Shining right there. That's going to be in it. And I got Beetlejuice right there. Dude, I got some great stuff coming. Uh, uh, original movie soundtracks, I've kind of been into that. But... Um, some stuff it just you just can't find in the United States, so I've had to order from other countries. If you guys know anything uh, about shipping right now, I think one of them is on a boat somewhere in the middle of the ocean for for weeks now. I've waited I've waited almost a month uh, for one to come in, and it's not happening. But 
in the meantime, I think I'll probably show you guys um, some more cool stuff. And I'm always out there hunting and digging. And I'll be back here to show you the great stuff. We'll see you.